So if you apply a very large, uh, if you have a very light force on your material, like you, let's say you put your you have your piezoelectric material and you you have a feather on top of it. Obviously, the feather has some finite weight. It's going to constrain the motion of the piezoelectric material a little bit. It's a feather. It has an has a finite weight. So it'll be like right there. Let's say if you have something larger, it'll be right here. And if you have something even larger, it'll be right there. And if you have an extremely heavy mass or something, uh, well, you'll might, you'll end up on this side actually. But if let's say you completely constrained your piezoelectric material, it won't even move. Uh, it will just produce a force, like in this case. Uh, this big wall or big mass is not moving anywhere. Uh, it's going to be there. So depending on the force you have on your piezoelectric material, you can think about it as a mass on your piezoelectric material, you will move along this curve here. And let's say if you applied a really big mass on your piezo on your material, you'll have a negative displacement. So your displacement will be here. This is a negative direction. So you'll have a big mass here, and you have it has a big force, and then you apply it in an electric field. You, if you apply electric field, uh, if depending on which voltage you use, <coughs> it will result in a moving down on this curve. So if you apply it, uh, a force, a blocking force, uh, and you will you'll move down uh, this curve by applying an electric field on that material. So uh, actually, you, you'll be over here. You'll be on this curve because the voltage is zero. Anyways, basically, by by increasing the voltage, you move up and down. Uh, you know, one of these lines, and by putting a mass or a force on the material uh, or the actuator rather, because you can define your point of stress and your point of tension anywhere here. Uh, by doing this, you will move up and down this curve here. And I actually have one last point to make. If and this is a certain figure of merit of piezoelectric materials called the piezoelectric stress constant constant. And it's often actually uh, perhaps ignored. It's not exactly reported, but it can be easily calculated. And uh, my question is, or that I'm going to answer is, what is it? And why do I care about it? <coughs> and how is it a piezoelectric? And how is it a figure of merit? We know about the piezoelectric D coefficient, right? You apply, and the piezoelectric D coefficient very quickly tells us, you know, the figure of merit sort of for the actuator is how much free displacement can you get for an applied voltage. But what's the similar? But the similar figure of merit for the uh, uh, related to material properties for the blocking force is this: the blocking force F B is equal to uh, or go D V A over S L D V A over S L. Uh, but so we see this combination here. So if D if the ratio D over S increases, our blocking force increases. Obviously you can't increase it because you already have your material. <coughs> but you can change your material and you can alter it such that you have the highest blocking force. So if you are designing a piezoelectric actuator and you want it to have and, and when you're designing on this curve, you're gonna want you and you're wanting it to work closer to its free uh, closer to its blocking force. Obviously, if your piezoelectric material is completely constrained, it's not doing any effective work. <coughs> but if you want your material uh, to be acting here, you know this is this is not the free displacement. Sorry, this is the this is the free displacement, and this is the blocking force. If you want it to be acting here, actually, the way to increase the slope, you know. If you if you if you increase d to the s ratio, you're sort of increasing the slope actually. If you increase the d to s ratio, but you but you keep <coughs> d the same. So if you change the s, and you make s smaller, the compliance smaller, instead of here, you'll have this. So d equals d, but s is greater than s two is s greater than s one, and this is the case two. So this is the case one, this is case two. Because you made it smaller, you increased this value. And believe it or not, this combination actually is also considered as a material property. D over S is known as E, 
which is the piezoelectric stress coefficient. So in this case, we'd have 3, 3, 3, 3, E. And it's always E. And this would also be called a 3, 3. And what this refers to is that for a constrained actuator, uh, which is <coughs> electrically hooked up, so basically, if we have a piezoelectric material and we apply a uh, voltage potential over it, uh, the uh, stress generated in the material, con let's assume that you're completely constraining it. And you're not allowing it to, uh, actually, we don't want the wires over there. We want the wires coming in here. But uh, uh, so if you apply an electric field, you will get stress generated in the piezoelectric material according to the E33 coefficient. And if again we just take a look at the form of the uh, blocking force F B equals D over S V A L, right? <coughs> you get this, right? So this is a com completely constrained condition. That means the piezoelectric material has a force within it, a stress within it reflective of this outward force because the stress is constant given that we are operating in a DC type condition it's constant in this type of material uh, you know it's, this is a flat simple plate but similar ideas also apply to the actuator but anyways let's calculate uh, this a little bit you know we're using force and voltage let's use the general terms such as stress and uh, electric field so V over L equals stress so we're going to change that to E 3, 3, we have an electric field applied in the 3 direction. This is area, so force over area would then be stress. So look, the, elect the electric field multiplied by the piezoelectric stress coefficient is the stress occurring in a completely constrained material, assuming that you're controlling the electric field in here. Uh, you know, you, well, you can't apply an electric field without controlling it, you know what I mean? So... Remember, my dear friends, that E33 may be an important parameter for you to consider, uh, not just the piezoelectric D coefficient. If you're gonna be, <coughs> if you're gonna be applying stress, uh, it may be one of those. Uh, maybe some one material may have a larger uh, compliance, and one material may have a, sl a slower, lower one. You want to look at the D coefficient, not just the D but D over S and, huh? and this is the way we would like to analyze so just be aware of this fact I've talked too much I hope you can understand if you, there are any questions at all yeah uh, free feel to e feel free to email me uh, look forward to seeing you next time thank you